Hello there. Almost three years after Brexit, the London financial sector is to be given new freedom according to plans by the British government. Finance Minister or Chancellor of the Exchequer Jeremy Hunt presented a far-reaching package of measures in Edinburgh in Scotland on Friday, which envisages various deregulations for banks. According to Hunt, the changes dubbed the Edinburgh reforms are intended to exploit new Brexit freedoms, abolish bureaucracy and boost economic growth. The sector also wants to open up more to cryptocurrencies. Caps on banker bonuses are removed. Among other things, rules are to be abolished that were introduced in 2008 as security mechanism after the financial crisis and obliged banks to separate riskier investments from other activities. However, Hunt stressed that the banks are in a very different situation today than they were then, dismissing critics' claims that the government was jeopardizing the security of the system. The Confederation of British Industry Trade Association and representatives of the London banking industry, of course, welcomed the announcement. The opposition accused Hunt of taking too many risks shortly after ex-Prime Minister Liz Truss' disastrous economic policy. For this to happen after the Tories have led our economy to the abyss is beyond misplaced, said finance industry MP Tulip Siddick. The City of London has been Europe's leading financial district, but that has changed with Brexit. Centres such as Amsterdam, Paris and Frankfurt compete with the British capital now. There is no Big Bang 2.0, but Jeremy Hunt announced a large number of reforms. And uh, with relaxing banking regulations, that will be quite a result. Britain's Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, has, as I said, represented the long-awaited post-Brexit reforms to financial and banking regulation for their own clientele. Unlike his predecessor, who spoke of a Big Bang 2.0 in memory of the radical deregulation of the city in London in 1986, Hunt chose a more modest title. And as I said, he calls it the Edinburgh Reforms because he presented them in Edinburgh. And that's 30 measures that are mostly very technical. The aim is to revise and partially relax the regulations for banks and insurance companies that dates back to the EU. He spoke of a golden opportunity. By leaving the EU, British regulation could be made more competitive and tailor-made in international comparison. The lessons of the financial crisis have been absolutely not forgotten. That's what he said in an interview, but everybody else believes something else. Banks have much stronger balance sheets today and there's a much better resolution system in place if things go wrong, he says. In addition to moving away from the EU Insurance Directive Solvency II, some of the major reform steps include relaxing the capital rules for medium-sized banks introduced in 2019. The threshold for so-called ring fencing, the separation between investment banking and retail lending and deposit business, is to be raised from 25 to 35 billion pounds of deposits. That helps medium-sized banks, according to the government. However, the separation rule still applies to industry giants such as Barclays, HSBC, NetWest and Lloyds. After Brexit, the City of London is now largely decoupled from the EU. This has put pressure on the government to relax regulations in a bid to bolster London amid intensified locational competition. Amsterdam has now replaced London as Europe's leading centre for stock trading. Congratulations, Amsterdam. The government's reform approach protects the foundations on which the country's success as a centre for the financial economy rests. That's what the Ministry of Finance said. These are agility, consistently high regulatory standards and openness. The plans, the Edinburgh reforms, had raised expectations of a major deregulation push in the financial sector. But their focus is now more on reviewing and adjusting rules. They should also remain in line with international standards. A large-scale dismantling of regulations is obviously off the table for now. The reforms include a review of short selling rules and an overhaul of prospectus requirements for IPOs. In addition, regulations are to be repealed or revised that the country introduced during EU membership. 
Two sets of rules that Britain fired on after the global financial crisis more than a decade ago are also to be reviewed. Among other things, this involves the appointment of bank managers who are responsible for critical banking areas such as risk management. The rules that require banks to protect their private customer transactions with a capital cushion to protect deposits are also to be revised, as I said. Institutions geared towards private customer business are to be relieved. Many of the changes are likely to benefit smaller banks. The British government also wants to use this to promote competition in the sector, which is dominated by big banks such as the ones I mentioned already, HSBC, Barclays, Lloyds and NetWest. The government also wants to review the EU-originated stock and bond trading requirement known as MIFID II. Great Britain has already initiated the first reforms. For example, regulatory authorities should also take the competitiveness of the City of London into account when drafting regulations. And regarding cryptocurrencies, according to the German newspaper Handelsblatt, Hunt announced that he would create a secure regulatory environment for digital stablecoins and ensure that the government has the necessary powers to conduct a broader range of investment-related crypto asset activities in, and incorporate that into the UK regulation. In contrast to other cryptocurrencies, stablecoins are said to be characterized by value stability, but have also been affected by drastic price slumps. However, regulation could promote their acceptance. The opposition accused Hunt of taking too many risks, as I already mentioned, and after ex-Prime Minister or short-term Prime Minister Liz Truss, that cannot be said often enough because she almost wrecked the economy and she brought the economy and all of the people in Britain into real trouble. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.